The Kinetic Chain, where power really comes from. Let's start with Tiger Woods and his prime. 2000 Pebble Beach, the most dominant performance in major championship history. Every great swing starts long before impact. Watch how Tiger builds energy through his entire body. Notice how the power doesn't start in his arms or shoulders. It starts in his feet, pressing into the ground. This is the kinetic chain, the sequential transfer of energy from one body segment to the next. Ground, legs, hips, torso, shoulders, arms, club, ball. Each segment accelerates the next, like cracking a whip. Here's what most amateur golfers get wrong. They try to create power with their arms and hands. But biomechanical studies show that over 50% of club head speed comes from the lower body and core rotation. Your arms are just the delivery system. Tiger's swing generated approximately 130 miles per hour of club head speed, not because he was muscular, but because his sequencing was flawless. His hips rotated before his shoulders, his shoulders before his arms, creating a lag that multiplied force with each transfer. Think of it like this. If you tried to throw a ball with just your arm, you'd get maybe 40 miles per hour. But use your legs, rotate your hips, turn your shoulders, then release your arm. Suddenly, you're throwing 80 to 90 miles per hour. Same principle, different sport. The key takeaway? Power isn't about strength, it's about sequencing. The golfer who times this chain correctly will always outdrive the one who just swings harder. Club path and face angle, the geometry of ball flight. Now let's talk about Adam Scott, widely considered to have one of the most technically perfect swings in modern golf. Adam Scott's swing shows the geometry of consistency, posture, plane, and timing. His swing demonstrates something crucial. Golf is geometry in motion. The relationship between your club path and face angle at impact determines everything about where your ball goes. Here's the science. Trackman research has proven that face angle controls about 85% of your ball's starting direction, while club path relative to face angle determines curvature. If your face is square to your target but your path is three degrees right, you'll hit a push draw. Face open two degrees with a path matching your target line that's a fade. Face open with a path even more right? That's the slice most golfers know too well. Look at these numbers from TrackMan data on tour professionals. The average PGA Tour player's face angle at impact varies only 1.5 degrees. That's the width of a toothpick at impact. 1.5 degrees separates pure shots from misses. Adam Scott's ability to control these angles comes from his consistent swing plane, that invisible tilted circle your club travels on. His posture, spine angle, and shoulder turn create the same geometric relationship swing after swing. The practical takeaway here is massive. You can't fix a slice just by swinging harder left. You need to understand the relationship between where your club is moving and where it's pointing. Modern launch monitors have revolutionized this understanding. What looked like a good swing might actually have a five degree path to face mismatch. Fix the geometry, fix the flight. Your club face controls direction, your path controls curvature. Get both right, and suddenly golf gets easier. Ground forces, the hidden power source. Let's look at Rory McIlroy, and specifically, why he bombs drives 320 plus yards without looking like a bodybuilder. What if I told you this power comes from the ground up, not the arms? Watch his feet. He's not just turning, he's pushing hard into the ground. Force plate studies measuring ground reaction forces show that elite golfers like Rory generate vertical forces exceeding 1.5 times their body weight during the downswing. That's not just rotation, that's an athletic push-off, similar to a basketball player jumping. Here's what's happening. As Rory starts his downswing, his lead leg straightens powerfully, pushing against the ground. Newton's third law kicks in. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The ground pushes back with tremendous force, and that energy travels up through his kinetic chain. Simultaneously, he's creating rotational forces by pushing with his trail foot while bracing with his lead foot, creating a torque effect that spins his hips at incredible speed. Scotty Scheffler shows us something even more interesting. Science doesn't demand perfect form. It rewards efficient movement. Scotty Scheffler proves that. His swing looks unconventional. His lead foot lifts early. He has that distinctive knee action but his ground force patterns are elite. Scientists studying his swing found that despite the unusual visuals, his force vectors and sequencing are extraordinarily efficient. This proves something important. The ground force pattern matters more than looking textbook perfect. Function over form. Scheffler generates massive power because he's transferring force efficiently, 
even if it doesn't look like Adam Scott's pretty swing. Research from the Titleist Performance Institute shows that amateur golfers typically use only 30-40% to 40 of the ground forces that tour professionals generate. That's the difference between a 240-yard drive and a 300-yard drive. Not necessarily swing speed, but how effectively you're using the ground to create that speed. The key insight, you swing through the ground, not just above it. Your legs and feet are your power source. Train them to push, brace, and rotate powerfully, and your entire swing changes. The role of tempo and timing. Before we wrap up, let's look at Nelly Corda. Nelly Corda's effortless motion hides complex biomechanics, a perfect balance of rhythm and rotation. Her motion looks effortless, almost lazy compared to Rory's explosive drive. But here's what's hidden beneath that smooth tempo, perfect timing and sequencing. Biomechanics research shows that tour professionals maintain remarkably consistent tempo ratios. The backswing to downswing timing is typically around three to one. Three seconds back, one second down. Nelly exemplifies this perfectly. What makes her swing so effective isn't brute force. It's the timing of when each body segment fires in the kinetic chain. Her hips start rotating milliseconds before her shoulders, creating separation and storing elastic energy. Her arms release at precisely the right moment to maximize club head speed at impact. This is why smooth tempo often produces more distance than aggressive, fast swings. When your sequencing is correct and your timing is consistent, energy transfer becomes efficient. When you rush, the chain breaks down and power leaks out. Studies using 3D motion capture show that the best ball strikers have the tightest windows of timing consistency. Their kinetic sequencing varies by only 10 to 20 milliseconds from swing to swing. Miss that window by 50 milliseconds and suddenly you're hitting it thin or fat. Nelly Corda's seemingly effortless power comes from rhythm, timing, and rotational control working in perfect harmony. She's not swinging hard, she's swinging smart. So let's recap what actually makes a golf swing work. First, the kinetic chain. Power flows from the ground up through sequential body segments, not from your arms. Tiger Woods mastered this. Second, club path and face angle geometry. Understanding the relationship between where your club moves and where it points determines ball flight with mathematical precision. Adam Scott shows us technical perfection. Third, ground reaction forces. Elite golfers like Rory McIlroy generate tremendous power by pushing into the ground and using the earth as their power source. And finally, timing. Nelly Corda reminds us that smooth, consistent sequencing beats aggressive effort every time. Here's the truth most golfers never realize. Your swing isn't mysterious. It's not about finding that one magic feel or secret move. It's physics. It's biomechanics. It's understanding cause and effect. When you know why a good swing works, you can diagnose why yours doesn't and actually fix it. The best part? This isn't just theory. With modern technology, launch monitors, force plates, high-speed cameras, this science is now accessible. You can measure your ground forces, see your club path and face angle, analyze your kinetic sequence. What was once guesswork is now data. What was once felt is now fact. If you understand why your swing works, you can control how it works. That's the difference between hoping you'll hit it pure and knowing you will. Subscribe to Golf U for more breakdowns like this every week, where we transform golf from a guessing game into a science you can master. We'll see you in the next one.